This is Alex Boyd, aka One Cent Two Cent Grinder. I play everything from One Cent Two Cent to Ten Twenty No Limit, and uh, I would like to go over this hand. This is a One Two No Limit hand, and uh, the villain here is an old guy, likes to give only action to people who give action, and I'm one of those action players. So this is how the hand turned out. I was in the big blind with Ace Nine Off. This guy supposedly had King Jack with clubs, as he said at the end of the hand. Raises to 12, uh, under the gun plus 1. I complete because I have ace high. Now, the flop comes 10-10 queen. On the flop, he said, if I bet anything, he'll raise me all in. So, right there I thought he might have a strong hand. So, instead of betting... I wanted to check to see if his hand was actually strong enough to bet because if it was I might just get rid of ace nine right on the flop and if he checked it I knew he didn't have anything and he just had a draw he wanted to get it in when he hits the draw but I know he would get it in with the draw and if I bet it he'll chase me out with a bet so I was like I'm just gonna check it to this motherfucker and see what he does he goes ahead and checks it back, so I know I've got him on lock. Four comes out, I snap bet five, he snap ships it, I snap call. I said, you can muck your hand, sir. I win, ace high. Like a boss. Alright, now let me go to the next hand. Now this hand, this hand happened at Hard Rock in Tampa. It was probably the best bluff I ever did in my poker career. I had Queen Jack off. I probably did better bluffs, but uh, sorry guys, I was cooking ch kitchen chicken in the kitchen, and it just came out the oven. Anyways, where was I at? Oh yeah, this is the Queen Jack hand. All right, let's let's roll through this action. So I was sitting under the gun plus one. This hand too. I make it 15. I get like almost a whole round of callers. And this one dude from the big line makes it 45. So I'm like, okay, maybe he has ace king because I got queen jack. Flop comes 10, 9, 3. That's good for my range. But I'm not going to bet it because I only get called by better. I'm going to wait till I hit it. I didn't hit it. So everybody checks it again and I check it through. This guy that didn't bet the flop return decides to bet 50 to like buy it. I'm like, wait a second, only better hands will call you. So if I had a better hand, I would raise you. And you can't call because you don't have a hand to begin with. You have ace team. If you had jacks or better, you would have bet all the, the whole time. If you had pocket eights, you'd probably check the river to call somebody's bet. Why the fuck are you betting? So I raise you to 150, you little $50 shit. It folds through. I take it down. $473 pot. Queen high. Dude on my left is like, dude, you're so sick. How did you do that? I'm like, man, I read him like a boss. Go on to the next hand. All right. Now, let me get this in order. This is the hand I played <clears throat> before I left the casino. That was the biggest pot uh, that was yesterday that happened. I had ace three of spades, and uh, I like those uh, low ace suited cards because if the ace doesn't hit, you could just buy somebody off of ace king and shit like that. So I had ace three under the gun plus one, and uh, under the gun plus one seems to be my favorite favorite thing. Anyways, the, the Asian guy bets 15 on a button after everybody uh, limp. I come and make it 45. After I make it 45, we get a call and a shove of 71. I can't reshove over top of him, and everybody else calls the 71. He ends up having pocket kings. I see a three. Now, nah, wait. So the reason I bet this flop was the other two people in the hand 
would have re-raised had they had a pocket pair <clears throat> because I already bet 45. Why are they going to call 45 if they're not reshoving the rest of their stack if they had a pocket pair? So I was like, they missed this board. The pot's already really big. If I go ahead and bet, the pot's going to get even bigger, and they're going to have a good price to call if they hit their card. I already hit my card. So if I lose the main pot, at least I win a side pot if they call me. So I go all in. Guy on the left calls a stack with 165. And the board comes runner, runner, 8-3. I hit trips on the river. And I just take the whole pot to myself, 779 there. So, yeah, that's how it happened. And then uh, the final hand of that day, of yesterday, this guy tried to purchase a pot from me. You don't, you don't purchase pots from me, man. That will get you in a lot of trouble. So this hand, man. So anyways, <clears throat> this hand, the reason I played this hand is because I was going to leave. I was already up 150. I was in for 600, and I had 750. I was going to leave, but I was like, fuck it, man. I looked at pocket fives. I'm like, I'm going to play these fives because I played 8-9 suited earlier, and the dude in seat 9 he uh he had pocket fives and raised pre-flop and I called with eight nine. Flop comes nine two three. So I have top pair. I check it to him hoping he's gonna bet something small. He bets like thirty dollars after he bet ten pre-flop and I'm the only caller. So he overbet the pot. I thought he had like jacks or something. I fold my nines face up, he shows me fives. So this is what I get him back with. I have pocket fives this time. And uh I call the two dollars. Everybody calls the two dollars in the table because the table is super loose. The flop, I flop middle set eight five three. I just bet eight dollars because really I don't think anybody hit the eight, and I block a lot of two pair combos with my pocket fives. So the best thing that can call me is like a straight draw, maybe runner runner straight draw. That's what this what the guy had. So he calls me because he's on tilt. Uh, that's actually the guy that I took. That had pocket kings earlier. That took a stack, so he's a little, he's a little salty. I hit, he hits the four. I'm at thirty. He calls the turn. Now the river makes a four card straight. Three, four, five, six, eight. So I'm like, this is the perfect two pair card. Like he could hit two pair and just try to buy it. I mean, I know if he had a straight draw on the turn, he'd probably ship it already, because he already what is he putting thirty in for and not shipping the rest in position like he could easily have a lot of things in position so i'm like the odds are really slim he has a deuce or a seven so i'm just gonna let him bluff his ass off i check he thinks about it for like 30 seconds before shipping it and when he shipped it i snap call and i said request to see your hand so i could put it on this blog ships it with a pair of fours stupid donkeys man stupid donkeys